Hello, hello, and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett, and we will be going over all things Gen Chem related here. Today, we're going to be talking about standard units of measurement and helping us calibrate ourselves on what units to expect within our chemistry course. Let's get started. So chemistry is unique because they have a lot of different units that we use that are not commonly used in our day-to-day -day lives. So it's important to make sure that we are familiar with some of the different types of standard units to expect when we're doing measurements in the chemistry field. So the standard units that we are gonna be working with are a, a set of units that have been agreed upon by scientists known as the International Standard Units for Comparison. Now these international system of units or the SI units um, really help us to talk amongst each other from one country to another and compare measurements on an equal playing field. So in this course and in most chemistry courses, the units that you're gonna to wanna to familiarize yourself are shown here. So one of the main measurements that we'll be doing is length measurements. And so with the length, in the US, we typically are familiar with the yard or an inch, um, but in chemistry, we're gonna be using the meter system. And so the symbol is small m. For mass, we will no longer be talking about pounds. We're gonna be looking at the kilogram as our unit or even the base unit, just the gram. Time is one of those things that doesn't change in chemistry. So we're still gonna be counting things in the unit of seconds. And temperature, which is the one that most people are not familiar with, rather than talking about it in Fahrenheit or Celsius, we're actually going to be using a unit known as the Kelvin. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Now, as I mentioned, temperature is one of those things that we measure across the world. However, depending on which country you may go to, the way in which we measure it will vary. So temperature is considered to be the measure of the average amount of kinetic energy caused by the motion of the particles. So what that means is the higher the temperature, the larger the average kinetic energy those particles will have, meaning they're gonna move faster. Heat is a form of kinetic energy, which means it is constantly in motion. And you'll realize that heat flows from matter that has higher thermal energy into matter that has lower thermal energy until they reach thermal equilibrium or the same temperature. The hot object is going to lose heat, the cold object gains heat, and you have this exchange until they reach the same temperature. We're gonna delve more into this idea in chapter six, but that's all we really wanna talk about or know for the moment. Now, as I mentioned, in different countries, there are different units that we use to measure our temperature. In the US, we commonly use the Fahrenheit unit. In most other countries, the Celsius unit is used. And in chemistry and in science, we're gonna be using the Kelvin unit. So I'm showing here some important equations that you're gonna to wanna to use, um, specifically uh, memorize the one going from Celsius to Kelvin. So to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we're simply going to take the Fahrenheit number minus 32 divided by 1.8 to get our Celsius number. And then if we want to convert to Kelvin, we would then simply add 273.15. Again, I highly recommend you memorize that conversion just for simplicity on test purposes. Now I want to just look a little bit more into this temperature scale and really help you guys understand the difference between these units. As I mentioned, the Fahrenheit scale is used primarily in the US and the Celsius scale is used in all other countries, a lot of other countries, not all, but most other countries. And then the Kelvin scale is what's used in science. Now the Kelvin scale represents what's considered to be an absolute scale, meaning there's no negative numbers. And that's gonna be really important to us when we get into chapter five, where we're looking at gas laws and understanding how these gas particles behave under different temperature conditions. Um, but essentially, if you look at the diagram that's shown here, you can see how these units compare. A Celsius degree is larger than a Fahrenheit degree, and so a change by one degree Celsius is much more noticeable than a change by one degree Fahrenheit. Um, but regardless of which unit we're measuring, we can see that we can easily convert for each of those. So on the Fahrenheit scale, we would say that water will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas in Celsius, it's at zero degrees, and in the Kelvin, se Kelvin scale, it's 273K. Uh, water would boil at 212 Fahrenheit in the US, 100 degrees elsewhere, and then 373 in, in uh, the Kelvin scale. Now it's important to note that because the Kelvin scale is simply an adjustment to the Celsius scale by adding 273.15 to that number, the size of a Kelvin unit is the same as that of the size of a Celsius unit. 
So again, as we're trying to compare the Fahrenheit and Celsius, the two more common units, remember that a Celsius degree is 1.8 times larger than a Fahrenheit degree. So when we have changes in a Celsius temp temperature, say one Celsius versus two Celsius, that temperature change, you'd be able to feel it much more readily than a Fahrenheit degrees change. Um, again, we can use this very simple formula, Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8 to calculate our Celsius. And we'll get an example here in a second. And then again, remember, as I mentioned, that the Kelvin versus the Celsius, they're really the same size. When we talk about how big that degree is, changing from one degree Celsius or one Kelvin, the size of that change is the same because we're simply adding the 273.15. So what that also means, in essence, that one Kelvin is 1.8 times larger than one Fahrenheit degree change. All right. Um, remember that zero degrees on the Kelvin scale is still much lower than the temperature than on the Celsius scale because of that 273.15 shift. OK, so let's try a problem. So you'll see a lot of my problem slides are set up like this. And it's really designed to help you think about the problem, what is the task at hand, and strategize and come up with a plan of action. So in this case, we're looking to convert from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. And so the first question you should ask yourself is, can this be done in one step? And we should remember from the two previous equations that no, it can't be done. So we want to come up with a plan of action here. So our plan here would be that we want to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, because we do know a conversion between those two, and then from Celsius into Kelvin. So the equations that we're going to use are those that were provided, us, provided to us on the previous page. And so we saw that the Celsius unit is equal to Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8, and then Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273.15. So with this in mind, we can see we have our steps. We know exactly the route that we need to take. So then we're ready to set up our numbers. So we take our zero degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. Now, when we plug that into our calculators, and again, I'm just using a basic TI 30, 30 series for my calculations. We're going to take 0 minus 32 divided by 1.8. And when we do that, we get negative 1, or excuse me, negative 17.78, repeating. Okay? Now, we remember this is not our final answer, so be careful on a multiple choice question. This answer may be listed. We right now are only in degrees Celsius, and we need to be in Kelvin. So to get to our Kelvin, we're going to take our Celsius temperature, that minus 17.78, plus the 273.15. When we add that together, we end up with 255.37. And then when we're looking at our significant figures, we would end up with an answer of 255 Kelvins. All right, and so we can very easily convert from one to the other. I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick video. Uh, stay tuned for more to come. See you guys next time. Bye.